Today on the show, we learned some amazing content marketing tactics. How's it going, everyone? Jason Croft here, the Credibility Craftsman. Today on the show, we've got Joel Widmer from Flux Digital Marketing. He has an amazing agency that helps people with their digital marketing, with their content marketing, in a way that you know it is so easy for his clients. He's got a, a secret sauce in there that really helps them get found. Um, but I'll let him talk about that in the episode here. Joel is, is an awesome guy who also really makes it a point to keep up with the marketers out there and the marketing tactics out there. So he educates his clients on an ongoing basis and educates anybody you know signed up on his list and, and really loves sharing content and information the, the way he does today in the interview. So I'm excited to bring this to you. Let's jump in with Joel Widmer. Joel Widmer. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. We're here at Lyft Office in Grapevine. Plug, plug. Great place to office. It is. And we are taking off. We're going to drive. We're going to talk content marketing. We're going to talk all things Joel Widmer. I hope not. <laughs> How's it going, man? It's going really well. It's Friday. It's uh, the usual 95 degrees outside. Beautiful. So let's talk Joel Widmer. What is your specialty, my friend? In uh, two words, content marketing. Um, nice. I help uh, smart people tell their stories um, in the easiest way possible. So, uh, yeah, that's what I do. That's awesome. So that encompasses a, a lot. lot. That yes. is very simple. So, knowing, you, I mean, you have a you have a unique approach to the whole thing, though. You, this mm -hmm. isn't just. You're going to write a couple of blog posts mm -hmm. for some people. Um, you work with, I, I like the distinction you make of working with smart people because you work with people who do know what they're talking about already. They just need help getting that out, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, and what do you, what do you kind of go from there once you've found that kind of person? Yeah. So I'll, uh, uh, maybe I'll tell you how it kind of started. Awesome. Um, and, uh, and what it's, come into. So eight years ago, I am having coffee with, uh, I just started my business, had a few clients and I had to sit down and have the first like really uncomfortable conversation with a client. I was and just, the client just in, in that current offering was, was kind of what just, an it was agency. strategy. Okay. It was marketing strategy. So we put down, uh, we, I created all of the strategy for him. They knew exactly what to do, even helped him, like told him like what type of content to write. Uh, and it had been a few weeks and he still hadn't written a thing. Like we put other things into action, but he just wasn't holding up his end of the deal. So I said, come on, like, I know, you know what you're talking about. You're super smart. Um, and, but nothing's happened. He's like, I, I just don't have the time, you know, right. he was, he, he had the best intentions, but just couldn't get around to doing it. So I said, in just kind of a moment of desperation, I was like, I've heard you talk about this stuff before. I'm going to hit record on my computer and I'm going to, you're just going to start talking to, and tell me about these things. So I just yeah. kind of asked him a few questions and an hour later we had done, uh, created a month of content and oh, wow. he didn't even realize it, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And eight years, you know, fast forward eight years, I've been refining this process, but it's really to get people just in their most natural state possible to forget about that. Talk to my team like a prospect or a client. And that's when your best stuff comes out, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're so close to this stuff every day. Uh, people don't realize how much they really know. Like yeah. they, they have so many great things and that's when they're brilliance comes out is when they're talking person to person, you know, oh, yeah. that's when like their best stories, that's, that's how people sell. Right. And so we just do that and help them bring it online and sound and look as good as they do offline. That's beautiful because we all suffer from it. You know, that's mm. the, that's the thing I do too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're in the middle of doing this. I, I do content marketing in, in form of video mm. and I, I can sit across from 
somebody and tell them exactly what they need to do and tell them how to get their story out. And then as soon as it comes to my own, <laughs> it's freezing up time. It's cobbler shoes, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so I love this, but it's also, you know, I, I, you and I know that, but it's good for people to hear so that they don't feel like, oh, well, I guess, I guess the smart people out there are getting this done mm -hmm. because I don't know what the heck to say. But this is exactly your point. Right. You're going after the people who are, and helping the people who are authorities in their space. They know, they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, and then that, that extra secret sauce, besides that interview aspect, what happens then? So you get that, that knowledge, you, you, know, you interview them for an hour or so, yeah. and then what happens? Well, it's what happens before and after. So yeah. like we spend like the entire first month and then we don't stop with just ongoing of uh, doing all the research, doing a deep dive into their brand and we call it downloading their DNA. Like we read everything they have ever had. We talk to them extensively, uh, really, I want, my goal is to sound like them more than they sound like them on paper, right? Nice. Yeah. So, and a lot of times we do, like we sound more like them than they do because people start writing really formally and start using jargon, you know, when they, when they start, you know, try to write for themselves versus talking. But, so we do all that and build out the entire strategy ahead of time. Uh, we come up with content ideas, with the SEO, you know, um, all that research. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, they just have that call and they're done. Um, and my team, we have, they get like an eight person team. We have professional editors, cop, uh, writers, um, transcriptionists. We transcribe it, we edit it, we write it, we revise it, we optimize it, we upload it, we optimize it again, we <laughs> schedule it, we publish it and we promote it. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and, and it's just for them, it's just autopilot besides mm -hmm. that one session with you they they get to if they want they can proofread it mm. and give us suggestions we'll make all the suggestions that are all the changes they want um and then yeah that's it that's fantastic so who's can you can you go into sort of some some details on on maybe some case studies of people who have really jumped in because i i think for a lot of people watching and listening immediately it clicks like oh my goodness this is exactly what i need for others Maybe it's, eh, does that, yeah. or if that fits for me. Yeah, definitely. What and kind of, yeah, I guess what kind of range of industries and all that. Yeah, and uh, for some people it, you know, doesn't work. Um, but I mean, I've worked with, um, what's interesting is it, it's back to that, uh, if you've been working in an industry and you have, you know, that knowledge and you are the, um, the person that people go to for advice, you know, yeah. or that they call up, you, chances are you, you know, you have a ton of great content right. that just needs to be unlocked, right? right? You just don't know it. And that's one of the cool, one of my favorite byproducts of this is people are like, wow, yeah, I didn't realize that, you know, I just kind of took all this for granted. And it's so cool to see, you know, them just like, holy cow, I just didn't realize that me and my entire team yeah. Um, had that so yeah because they've spent 10 mm -hmm. 15 years in an industry exactly. soaking that stuff up mm -hmm. that the Just, outside world or even getting people in they, there's always someone they can teach yeah. and they can help mm -hmm. and what's cool is like the i mean this isn't a new concept right uh, i mean look at like the it industry they've done it forever like they put document as much as possible like especially in like customer support so they don't have to say the same thing over and over again, uh, right? Yes. Gotcha. Uh, so that's one of the nice things that this helps with is if you have, if you're answering a question more than once, then chances are you probably need to turn it into an article to help people um, and to take off some of the burden of you having to repeat yourself all the time. Oh yeah, exactly. You know? um, so some of the main industries that we help are professional services like B2B uh, from everybody from like a CFO to a doctor to a um, consultants, uh, trainers, um, speakers, um, things like that. Uh, SaaS companies, software as a service. Uh, gotcha. nice and sense. yeah, some e-commerce companies. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, those are the main, those are the main types of people. Um, but B2B, a lot of B2B companies 
Um, and uh, yeah, quite a few, I would say, yeah, quite a few B2C companies as well, like e-commerce. Very nice. Yeah. So is there ever any any pushback, or maybe in those beginning days, was there sort of a, a pushback as you found the right combination for these folks and the right system? Um, I wouldn't say pushback, but there is uh, hesitancy. Hmm. Like, uh, yeah, and it, which is completely natural. If you go from, um, you know, I've never written before, I've never actually put these down and to having these conversations, people are scared how they're going to come off. Right. Right. But what's, uh, like I said, like, um, they get their, after the first time that they do it, they're like, okay, yeah, that's a no brainer. And our clients stay with us for years because they could never go back to the old way oh, of, yeah. um, like an hour versus 16 hours, which is on average, we, we did the math on how long it usually takes to create just four articles. And if you do it right, yeah. If, and that's if they if ever did yeah. it, right. Which yep. is usually what happens is they never get around exactly. to it. Because they know <laughs> it's in that realm mm-hmm. of 16 hours exactly. and they gotta sit there and do. So the biggest thing though is I don't feel like I have enough to say. Mm-hmm. That's or, the biggest like, yep. pushback. Yep. Or, right. And uh, this has been written about a gazillion times. Uh, um, why, how can I add to the conversation, you know? Yeah, so what, what do you answer to that? I firmly believe that uh, there's there's a one reason why when you search marketing or anything else on Google that there's more than one page of Google search <laughs> results, right? Right. Because if everybody want if everybody if the if one answer was the um, it was the right answer for everyone, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not about the answer; it's about the person giving the answer, right? Right. And it's about the the perspective that they bring. So Jason's stuff may be awesome for me and I really get it, but it might not, you know, click for somebody else, right? That's unlikely, but, you yeah. know, unlikely for yeah. other people. Should yes. have given another example. Exactly. Yeah. That's hard for people to, to relate yeah. to. That's tough. <laughs> but, but yeah, exactly. There's, there's <laughs> some things just click mm-hmm. the right way with, different, with exactly. different people and the way they, they do this. And, you know, I really like the fact too that, you know, this, this is also different than the the completely outsourced model too, right? Yes. Like this is yes because Way that's different. so inauthentic, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of a you know something that, that people can get hung up on as yes. well. Like oh well, it's it's really sh- I mean this is my company's bl- blog. Yep. It should really be coming from me, and then and and this I is the, agree. That's yeah. A, yeah, it should be. And that's this like, is the beautiful blend yeah. of of those two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like uh, outsourcing your social media to an intern. Like, right. <laughs> that is a completely different story. Um, but that's why we take, yeah, uh, we do that interview. We have it transcribed um, and we actually, we use their words. Right. You know, um, you're totally right. Um, that's a great point. But that's why there is more than, um, like, uh, there's more than one dishwashing repair company, right? It's. Uh, if, if that was the client, um, it's the same as Google search results, right? Like if, if one company was good for everybody, then you wouldn't have multiple companies, but yeah, it's the absolutely. same with the voices. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So how, and, and as you're seeing, you're, I mean, you're deep into this world in the mm-hmm. content marketing world, in the marketing world across the board and helping your clients really separate themselves because it is I mean, we hear it all the time, but it's true. I mean, it's just noisier, noisier, mm-hmm. noisier. And your product and your service inherently helps with this. But what are we, what's the next steps? Like, how are you really helping your, your client jump out there and separate themselves? Yeah. So the, if you think of like the articles as the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the building blocks to everything, but we don't just do articles. So, uh, we use that to, based on whatever strategy it it is, but let's just say we use that to create, it's first on the blog, but then we use, um, turn those also into, um, lead magnets, which are like email opt-ins, like from eBooks to cheat sheets, to checklists, to templates, whatever works for, um, getting those people to subscribe to their email list. Gotcha. There's really three reasons, right? Um, uh, increasing traffic, generating 
leads, more sales, or just uh, conversions, right? Email opt-ins. Right. Um, and so we, we do that. We also create email sequences and like marketing automation. Oh, nice. um, we do it for uh, all of that content. It's also amazing for uh, social media updates. So we pull like the best little quips or the, you know, kind of tweetables mm -hmm. and uh, put that out on social media to promote the content, um, create gra like, you know, art, uh, graphics from those. Um, That's huge. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's uh, one, several different things. Yeah, so all of those is just, I mean, it's, it's a mass amount mm -hmm. in order to <laughs> constantly stay in front of them. Yeah, prospects. but then it's all wrapped in the strategy. That's what's really like, uh, so they have a full content marketing department uh, that um, they know is everything is coming and starting with the strategy. And a lot of times these guys have full marketing departments. They just don't have anyone to specialize in the content side. Gotcha. So we just free up their time to work on that so we can take care of this. That's wonderful. Yeah, especially if, and I, I, I imagine it's kind of a blend of both. Like you have some clients who have that department and have that strategy in place and, oh. and then you can just run with it and execute against it. But then you can also come in there and tweak someone's strategy yeah. or help them develop one. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's exactly right. And what's that ideal, you know, you talked about those industries, like mm -hmm. let's say a consultant comes in and he's already, he knows what he's doing. He's an authority in his space, mm -hmm. maybe he even has a book and he has this, but he's, he knows he needs to be getting this content out. What is that? I guess when you when you go through there, what's that full strategy? Is it the same for everyone? Or, oh, definitely not. Yeah. Or what what would be different as him and as, as an example, somebody mm -hmm. who who wants to you know book more consulting engagement, maybe some speaking and things. What's that? Do you, do you kind of decide on channels at that point, and is that part of that strategy, or is yeah, it even bigger than that? It's it is. It's it's. Uh, I just uh, it's a great example because I just uh, had a a big session with a consultant uh, earlier this week. Oh, nice. and. Uh, he is a fantastic blogger. It comes easy for him mm -hmm. um, and is extremely successful in what he's doing, but he wanted to uh, productize his services a little bit more and uh, figure out how to um, better leverage his leads online. Gotcha. And so we helped him from like creating uh, better audience personas and uncovering some things he was a little too close to, you know, and, uh, oh, and gave him some huge insights, um, about his audience. He never realized, oh, that's you know, beautiful. and then built out the, uh, um, the strategy. And so he's great at the content. And if that's the case, um, we're great. Like go for it. Like we don't even, we don't even worry about it. Some of our clients, we don't create the content, but he needed help with the marketing automation, right? Building gotcha. the funnels, uh, the, you know, different points of conversion. So that's the part that we do. Oh, that's great. So uh, in every situation, it might be a little, you know, it is different. Yeah. So we don't do the exact same thing. Um, every single person's different. We don't give them just a, a box, you know, solution. Right. And that's why it's so critical and, and great that what you do too is staying up to date on I mean, you have, you're right there in the middle of it without, without, you know, the chasing the shiny object syndrome or anything mm -hmm. like that, but staying the forefront of like, this is really what's resonating with people right now. And these are the channels that are, that mm -hmm. are driving. Are there any certain trends coming up that you kind of see the industry shifting into, or even maybe it's a separate question, but sort of tools and, and the automation tools that you use and mm -hmm. kind of recommend for folks? Yeah. So, um, as far as trends go, I mean, I think a big trend that I've seen, I, uh, and I've been saying it for uh, the last three years is, uh, micro communities. I think, mm. uh, people are gravitating towards these smaller, super niche, super specialized industries to connect with people just like them. So it's gotcha. not just I'm on LinkedIn, it's I'm part of this group or I'm part of this now. It's like a Slack channel, mm. right? right. Um, or this, I mean, Facebook groups are incredible for it. I'm part of some 
amazing Facebook groups uh, yeah. that are extremely helpful. They've done a great job with a lot better than LinkedIn has with the groups feature. Right. Um, uh, so I think that is a huge trend. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because somebody they can, I mean, they're on. Maybe it's even on, like like with Facebook. It's a it's a platform they're already leveraging. They get it. They're familiar with mm -hmm. it. But wow, you know, it's like you hit one of those right groups, mm -hmm. and it's my people. You know, yes, that's you, exactly you know? right. That's exactly right. So, what about on the technical side of things? Are there are there different? Because I know I, I know you post about that quite a bit too. Yeah, you know, yeah. I always I love tools, tools and apps, and yes. Yeah. Um, Man, I, uh, I mean, geez, there's so many of them. Um, well, and you jumped in with, um, you, you're kind of making that shift over to Thrive. Mm -hmm. feed, yeah, Thrive I love Thrive. And... Yeah, um, big fan of them. I, I love lead pages, uh, but Thrive. If you are, if you need more than just the landing pages, uh, like the website themes, the different opt-ins, the, um, geez, everything from like countdown timers too. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I lose track of how much stuff <laughs> that they have. Super affordable and uh, really easy to use. That's um, great. It's a, it's a great tool. Um, one of the things I'm a huge and I'm always trying to get people to do is um, just document more. Mm -hmm. uh, in what way? In, so you can say something in an email, but it's easier and it is a way higher perceived value to record a quick screencast and say, hey, let me just not uh, tell you in an email, like step by step, but hey, let me actually show you. Like if you're trying to help out a client or explain something technical, mm -hmm. um, or you're just lazy and don't like to type, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, but people like, it's it really is easier and using a free like Chrome plugin, like Loom, L-O-O-O-M, mm -hmm. completely free hosting and everything. You record it, um, and it instantly gives you a link to share it. That's right. Yeah, it um, is really good. And it is. It's there's that perception too of just like, wow, wow. they did all this yeah. just for me. Exactly like, just to respond. Oh, that's huge. And then you can use those um, over and over again, especially like in customer support or uh, just point, yeah. in. Um, I know we use a bunch in like client onboarding. You know, oh, hey, yeah. here's how you use this project management tool or here's some great tips or yeah, things like that. Oh, that's um, great. Just makes it really easy. So I know you you provide, I mean, all these awesome services. What are some folks, even out there, even if they're still doing it on their own, mm -hmm. uh, what are some nuggets and trends right now that, that are really differentiators that, that people could have like a quick win, like with their email or with, with those articles they're, they're writing already? Yeah. Um, so I think one thing is there's a big difference between um, writing an article that can help lead to a conversion and then staying in the content marketing friend zone, we call it. <laughs> That's uh, great. And by conversion too, you mean whatever that call to action may be for them. That's exactly right. right. Okay. Um, so that could be signing up for your email list. Um, that could be even just, um, of course, like, buying your product, but it's really seeing you as the person that has the solution to their problem rather than just a nice guy with a helpful resource, right? Gotcha. So, so, can, so how do you do that? Um, so here's just a few few ways to do it. And so the first is uh, most people write insanely helpful content, right? Mm -hmm. And they give away uh, amazing stuff and they're like, man, I just gave away like a ton of my best ideas. Why isn't anybody knocking down my door to hire me? Right, because you hear that from a yeah. lot of people too. G give away your knowledge and people mm -hmm. will come. Uh-huh. Um, but just like the guy in the friend zone, <laughs> what happens is it, it's uh, really, they you make it all about, if you make it all about the content, people are going to it's going to be all about that. Instead, what you want to do is it's kind of like Inception where you tie it back. There has to be a bridge back to your stuff. And it's not like, oh, by the way, we can do this for you. It's like, if you're going to include examples, include it of people that you have helped do this. Okay. Right? Uh, include it for people in the target industries that you serve. So, 
Um, I did a bad job earlier on talking about, uh, what was it like, um, I said like painters or um, something else, we don't really help them, but I should have said like consultants or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then talked about how we helped a, uh, a consultant. That, then, right? yeah, then go to that mm -hmm. example. Exactly, so. So are you, are, are you holding back information or is it more delivering it in a different way? Um, or both? You're not, you don't, it's not helpful to give somebody everything. So yeah, okay. you are deliberately holding stuff back. It's what I call useful, but incomplete, right? Gotcha. So yeah, I want to keep them wanting more, just like any good piece of content does. Uh, but I give them enough to get started, ah, right? That's the key. Okay. Um, and they, you know, they, yeah. they believe they can do it. Mm -hmm. There's enough that, but now they need help for that mm -hmm. next step, two, three, four. Exactly, but you also got to think about um, there's three levels of any service, right? I do it for you, I do it with you, and I give you the resources to do it yourself, right? Right. So depending on what you serve there, so if I am giving you, uh, if I'm doing a do, uh, do it for you service, then I will, I'm happy to give away everything, tell you exactly how I do it, because okay. I don't want the DIY people who want to do it all themselves, I want to weed them out. So I use the content, I say, hey, yeah, here's my best ideas, here's exactly how to do it. Um, if you want to do it yourself, go for it, because I want oh, to yeah. pre-qualify them. I don't want those people. Absolutely. Um, well, yeah, and that's, I mean, it, because then you get seen as, mm -hmm. you're definitely the authority out there. Exactly. You're generous and everything. But your ultimate clients, you know that a percentage are going to come down. Like a certain amount of people yep. will, you know, will consume maybe an ebook about that yep. topic. Then a certain amount will take that course, and then a certain amount exactly. will come in and like Joel, just do this for me. My mm -hmm. goodness. Yes. Like, hey, okay, I know, I know now that you know how to do it. Like, uh, but I just don't have the time or the team to do it. So, um, do it for me. That's exactly. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, but then also uh, another just quick tip with that is, is like I said, bridging the knowledge gap there. So it's, there's no like blatant sell. You're always giving the person the next step to take. So every page on your website, you should know, uh, you should have a next logical step for the person to take on that page, okay. whether it's the about page, whether it's the contact, whether it's a blog post, but always give them a next step because you're just kind of stepping them into uh, like kind of down your sales cycle, right? Gotcha. It's just like you wouldn't go to coffee with a new prospect. You guys are awesome. And you're like, cool. See you later. <laughs> See you you right. know, um, you're giving the person the next action to take. And it might not be, it's not, it's not a matter of having like every place on your website is now buy this, now buy this, no. now buy this. You're guiding them over here because yeah. now they're going to educate here and you're gonna have enough places in there where they could jump exactly. out. Exactly. If they're ready, if you're not quite ready yet, well, here, learn a little exactly. more. Exactly, learn a little more. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. Getting the person usually to take that first step, uh, one of the best ways to do it, and I'm sure uh, your listeners have seen this, um, but using like a content upgrade or a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, um, there's a ton of different phrases for it, but what it is is a useful piece of information that's usually gated uh, by an email opt-in. So, hey, use your email and get this free ebook or something. Right, or um, course. Or exactly, just, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people put the same ebook on their uh, throughout their entire site and wonder why they don't get anybody in it. You know, right. it's forty-five pages of <laughs> ten-point text, and <laughs> right. it, there's so much value in there, but. The, the point is, or the, I mean, the truth is, is that people will never read it. Yeah, right. it's great that it's on their desktop, but it's going to get buried just like that, you know, like a one piece of paper in a huge stack on their desk, right? Right. Which And number one, they won't read it. And there's, there's plenty of negatives to that. Mm -hmm. But also even, it used to be like, oh, well, even if they didn't, they don't read it, 
I still got their email address. Yeah. They still got it in there. But now, I mean, we're seeing more and more just the... So much more competition, yeah. Yeah, and that's noise. And honestly, people going, I don't want another exactly ebook that's going to sit Exactly. There. And if they don't read it, they don't take action. If they don't right. take action, they aren't a good prospect. They aren't engaged. So a good rule of thumb is they should be able to get like 90% of the value from that um, content upgrade, like in the first three to five minutes. Oh, wow. So it should take them that long to consume the entire thing. So we're not talking a 30 page ebook, we're talking a two page checklist, right? Gotcha. One of the most popular ones I did, it got like, um, just like, you know, 160 email signups in a couple days it was just a, uh, list of templates, email templates, oh, you know, just fantastic. super, um, useful. Um, but wasn't really long. People can use it as a resource on and on and on, you know? Oh yeah. Just copy paste. Oh, that's great. Um, and you mentioned that you use that phrase content upgrade mm -hmm. and, and that's a, that's a twist on all of this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so th that's the other thing is the more relevant that content upgrade or lead magnet is, the higher your opt-in or conversions rate. Relevant, uh, con and relevant to what? Relevant to the article that you have it on. Gotcha. So we create a lot of times specific content upgrades exactly like for that article. Uh, so gotcha. it, it's like one per article. So we spend yeah. just as much time on creating that as we do the article. Right. It takes a lot more time, but but it's manageable too when you're not you're not creating a forty page mm -hmm. ebook per article. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the next logical step. Oh, I I uh, know I need these email templates. Oh, here they are. Yeah. Now I can download them. That's perfect. Um, or we did one on content upgrades, showed a bunch of different examples of them, and then we created a step by step how to actually set up the technical piece of it. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, that's so smart. And it is. It's that, and that's that next level of separation and differentiation mm -hmm. out there and getting above the noise. Yeah. Once again, especially when it's it is getting harder to get that that email address, and you do want to, like, oh, wow, if I can get <laughs> this kind of mm -hmm. here's the article, great, genius, love it. I'm gonna get more of that. But then also this these useful kind of uh -huh. tools. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So after so great you got an email address yeah. right um so then what? <laughs> now what do you do right uh, and that's the part that a lot of people struggle with because they're amazing face to face like cool you got a contact you know what to do right we're going right. to call them i know what to say i know who to ask for but with email it's like i've got a bunch of letters you know <laughs> right. uh, what do i do with this and it's it feels weird it feels alien you know like to the person so uh, you can do a bunch of different things and I, it's, um, but we'll just keep it uh, something quick and uh, super yeah, quick just, here. Just kind of a media yeah. that, that everyone can do yeah. for sure. So one of the things that's most overlooked is just a welcome email. And oh. if you have any kind of uh, email automation and even like MailChimp has this, where as soon as somebody subscribes, they not only get your content upgrade, but they get a welcome email to, and tells them maybe a little bit more about you and what they can expect from you, you gotcha. know? Um, and that's a great way to kind of set expectations with them, show them um, what's coming up. Maybe you have a newsletter, maybe it's a series of posts, but just doing that um, goes a long way with people. Oh yeah, and just, and plus setting a tone. Because exactly. ideally, yeah. certainly you have your unique voice mm -hmm. and how you're going to communicate to this this audience on mm -hmm. an ongoing basis and that really sets the tone and if somebody you really have the opportunity to you know have them looking forward to that next one exactly rather than you know a week or two weeks later yep. they get that first thing and it's like oh who's this who's exactly this and that's oh, what happens that's, yes yeah. so you're right building that anticipation is huge yeah. like in this next email i'm going to show you x or you know here's what you can expect from us and and people love that. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and I guess it's it's kind of different for every every person who's mm -hmm. developing this. But some people are going to lean towards some. For some people, that value they're giving is that content and tools and tactics. Other people, it's 
complete personality or it's you know mm-hmm. <laughs> or and then ideally there's a mix of both right exactly yeah exactly so yeah that's uh, something that is extremely easy to set up and will make you look great just by it going out automatically so you don't have to think about it yeah. right um, every single time that's great well, those are yeah those are those are some awesome quick wins that any, anybody can jump in and, and, and start doing and they're it's a it's a massive differentiator. It is. You know, as simple as each one of those steps are, the, mm-hmm. the amount of people who actually have those in place are, yeah. are, are, are so few. I'll give you a few just uh, like real world scenarios from uh, our clients real oh, quick. Oh, perfect, yeah. Uh, so having that welcome email in place with a few, like uh, with a short, we did we created like a five um, part email sequence. Um, it was for a, a property management company. Okay. And... It just educates them on um, um, if they need a property manager, right? What okay. to look for, um, gave them several checklists, um, things like that. And my client called me the other day and was like, man, your sequence just saved me, just cut my sales process, my in-person by two thirds. I just wow. got three, I just signed three new clients and I usually spend three hours each with them just in that sales process. And I save nine hours. I only only spent an hour with each one. Oh, that's beautiful. uh, Because they had already been educated. Their questions had already been answered, which was very strategic, right? We have an FAQs email in there. Um, Like they knew what they, they knew what to expect. They knew what they wanted. They were ready to go. Oh, that's great. Another one, just a super small thing um, with writing these intentional emails. Um, we had just started with this client. It was a recruiting company and they, um, she emailed me and after they had pu- published the first post, we always republished to LinkedIn a little bit later. She was like, man, I, uh, I wanted to say thanks because a competitor just um, emailed me and said, um, man, these are amazing articles and I wanted to give you a bunch of referrals for somebody that they had been looking for oh and goodness. just just you made me think of it with these articles and uh, competitor turned into like a uh, an ally you know a referral source wow which is cool that's amazing <laughs> um, and then just the just a, a point for consistency uh, we were working with like a local doctor's office and been doing just weekly just talking about different issues that patients can expect, you know, mm-hmm. FAQs and stuff. Mm-hmm. When we started, they were getting, uh, two years ago, 2,000 views, and we just hit 50,000 a month. Wow. Uh, not views, uh, sessions, actual people on there. Oh um, and it's been growing like crazy, and they are now bigger than most, like, actual content sites, and they're just a local business. getting that is and incredible. They get, um, a, a huge majority of all of their new patients from online, wow. from just these articles. That just developed all this SEO and mm-hmm. just over the years, yeah. just consistent, consistent, exactly. consistent. If you aren't going to help, you know, someone's going to help your it's prospects, why. Right? <laughs> right? So why, sh- you know, why not you? Oh, They're yeah. looking for answers. They are searching around. The, the person that is helpful and intentional is going to win their business. Oh yeah. And I think that's, that's so key as well is getting in that mindset with it all too. Mm-hmm. So that, cause I know starting out, you think about the, the, the I'm, the I'm going to give away too much. Not, that's, not even that's a that. Big one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it, but it's also like, how, you know, yeah, I get they've got hundreds of articles on there and of course mm-hmm. they're getting it. And you're just at the beginning stages and you just think, Here's my one article. Here's right. my two articles. Yep. But it's it's so key to have that long term perspective that say, you, I promise mm-hmm. you, you'll see some immediate results. But just do this every week. In six months, you will pick your head up. It will go by in a flash. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you will be amazed at at the results you've you've been able to to put together. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, that's awesome. I I appreciate those those tools and tactics. How can somebody kind of follow along and get even? more from you and work with you and and all of that yeah just uh flux.co um and uh if you don't think you have enough content um or you don't think you have anything to say just let's 
uh, just schedule a quick session and see, do a quick evaluation. Oh yeah, awesome. So flux.co, F-L-U-X-E. Yes, sir. Co. Yes. And they can find everything they need there. Fantastic. Joel, awesome. thanks so much for being on. Thank you. I hope you got a lot out of that interview. And if you've got a business and you're doing any kind of content marketing, I know you got a lot out of that interview. And if you're not, you really should be. And hopefully this has inspired you to do so because uh, it's so critical to get your message out there. And, you know, Joel gave us some quick wins there, which were great that we can do ourselves. But he and his team do a fantastic job and it really is so painless to kind of go through that process and end up with so much content at the end of six months like like we mentioned in the interview um, and you'll see a massive difference in the inbound calls and the, the the marketing that goes on that transitions into sales so quickly um, it's an amazing it's an amazing thing and, and, you know, your competitors, your vendors, your strategic partners will all be amazed at the end of the day um, that you do produce so much content, so much useful, wonderful content there. So I highly suggest uh, jumping in with Joel and uh, check, you know, just sign up for his list and see what he's all about. I'll have all the show notes and links, and all that good stuff at thejasoncroft.com forward slash Joel. Make sure you check that out. If you like interviews like this, please subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, make sure you subscribe there. And please leave us a review, if you will. It helps us get found out in the iTunes marketplace. So I really enjoyed this episode with Joel. I hope you did as well. And we'll see you on the next one. It's Saturday night. It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly When the coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers On now and later start the beat maker If I'm a player it's like you take deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would think about stealing But it's not my steed so I commence with the digging No kidding, something that'll keep the beats hitting while I'm getting so much to choose from, bro.